Yes. Okay. So, so I would like to check if everyone can hear me and see me. Uh, can hear me clearly and see uh, see me clearly as well. So, can you please type "You are beautiful" in the chat box? Let's spread some positivity. If you can hear me and see me, type "You are beautiful" in the chat box. Thank you so much, Anka. Anka Yang, you're beautiful too. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Pavitra. So, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm not seeing a lot of you are you're beautiful too, as man, Miss Asman, Mr. Asman, Miss Aina. Thank you so much. You're also so beautiful. So great. I think everyone can hear me and see me. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for finding time and joining us for this session. And uh, I'm, I'm, I want to welcome every one of you for joining this session organized by the International Office in UPM, IPUTRA. And today for this session, we'll be t talking or discussing on the topic of studying abroad du during a global crisis. So I am Fatma Said Ali, an international student from Sudan at the Faculty of Biotechnology and Biomolecular Sciences. And I'm so glad to be your moderator for this session. I'm also pleased to introduce our speakers for today. We have two speakers from Japan. We have two speakers from Japan who have came in two different stages of the pandemic. The first speaker is Mr. An Kayong, who came back or returned to Malaysia in the early stages of the pandemic. And the second uh, speaker from Japan is Ms. Bavitra, who came during the lockdown. We also have another speaker from France, Ms. Amira Afrina, joining us today to share her experience. So let's get to know more about our speakers. Uh, we were also supposed to have another speaker for today, uh, but unfortunately he couldn't join us. So hopefully he can join in future sessions. So let's get to know more about our speakers for today. So Mr. An Kayong is a bachelor student from the Faculty of Forestry and Environment. He went to Japan for six month exchange program under Asian, student, Asian International Mobility Student Scholarship, also known as AIM, from September 2019, and he has returned in January 2020. The second speaker is uh, Ms. Amira Afrina, a bachelor student from the Faculty of Modern Language and Communication, and she went uh, to France for 12 months exchange program, such a long time, from September 2019 until uh, she, she have returned to Malaysia in uh, May 2020. And the last speaker is Ms. Babitra, a postgrad student who went to Japan for two month exchange uh, program uh, from February 2020 and has returned to Malaysia in uh, April 2020. So I'm sure now you're all excited to get to know more about our uh, speakers for today and to hear their experiences. But before we get started, there are some housekeeping items that you need to know. First, if you have any question during the presentation, please feel free to type them in the chat box or uh, I will try to bring them during the presentation and we're also going to have time for questions at the end of the presentation. Also, all the participants will be muted during the presentation just to allow the presenter to present without any interruption. And now, without further ado, let's kick things off by starting with our first speaker, Mr. Ankayang. The mic is yours. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So may the center present my slide. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, um, my name is Ankayang, and you can call me Eng or Kayang. Actually, in Japan, the Japanese call me En because Eng is same as the money in the Japanese language. And currently, I'm a second year environmental science and technology student. So during the last September of 2019, I was lucky enough to have a chance to study abroad. My host university is the University of Tsukuba, located in the Ibaraki prefecture. Just in case you don't know where is the Ibaraki, it is located next to the Tokyo the national capital of Japan. Next. Um, so initially, I was given two choices if I choose Japan as my destination. Uh, they, they give me two, is Tsukuba University and the Ibaraki University. And finally, I choose Tsukuba University. And why do I choose this university? Because this university, right, um, 
it is a top university that offer many of the courses in English. Because Japan is a monoethnic country and many Japanese don't speak English, so it is important for me. And then the, at the same time, the university is excelled in my own profession, which is the environmental science and technology. The university, right, they have a center focusing in the environmental technology and actually it has the official relationship with the KL campus of UTM. Besides, it is the second largest university and located in the science city of Japan. Until the time I lived there, I still, actually I still haven't explored finished the university and the city. In Japan, campus with large area like UPM and this university, right, are very rare as Japan uh, is lack of flat lands. Next, please. So how do I know about the AMS program? Mm, M actually is an acronym for the ASEAN International Mobility for Students. Initially, I asked my lecturers about, is there any existing exchange programs for the students? But at that time, right, uh, last year at that time, there was no student in my faculty, uh, the formerly known as the Faculty of Environmental Studies, went to a change program. So I make a request to my lecturer about if there is any uh, exchange program, please tell me. And then I also went to the International Center and read some info online uh, on the UPM Inter International Center website. And lucky in, luckily enough, there was a meeting about the uh, allocation of budget for M students and my lecturer suspect successfully reserved a seat for me. Next, please. So, it is an exchange program initiated by the Malaysian government in moving the Southeast Asians and Japanese students. We receive and send the students to each other's university. Uh, last year, there was a student from the University of Tsukuba came to UPM under M's as well. Uh, I did not meet her because uh, she stayed in the K10 college, which is belong to the engineering faculty. And during my stay in Japan, we have many students from Brunei, Indonesia, and Thailand. Next, please. So what were my initial thoughts before I go to exchange? Next. Mm, first of all, I was so excited when I knew that I got the chance to Japan because as you know, right, going to Japan is not that easy to get. So it is the lucky and the hard work which make this happen. Um, and here I'm really appreciate to the UPM International Center and the coordinator, Miss City, uh, my lecturer, Dr. Jufazana, and the host university coordinator, Miss Mayu. And as I was the first student of my faculty to participate in AMS, so I need to prepare all the paperwork for the application. And most importantly, discuss with my lecturers about the exchange details. Because uh, I'm the first one, so I have no clue what will happen uh, for the exchange. For example, sometimes I need to reply some emails, very urgent, for the immigration purpose and the student registration system for that Japanese university. Besides, I also need to spend some time on understanding the course content in Japanese for my credit transfer. But I don't have, uh, I don't have the ability to speak Japanese, so I need to use Google Translate to translate all the Japanese documents. Um, but overall, the process was quite excited because I knew that what I've done will lead me to Japan. Next, please. So about the second part, were the thoughts during the exchange. Next, please. So when I landed in Japan, right, I feel very touched because it's so beautiful. When I step up from the airport, I noticed the skies were so blue. I never see the blue that's so deep, even in Malaysia. And it was my first time travel to foreign country. So during my exchange period, I grabbed the chance to visit the Tsukuba and Tokyo if I could. But at the time it's fall and winter, so the weather is quite cold for us, the Malaysians, because we are used to the hot weather. 
and usually like a normal day is five to six degree and it, if a cloudy day is one or two degree so it's quite frozen for us but still i got the chance to wash the golden leaves feel the winter taste the sushi and spend the new year there the winter was so cold in the night it's like negative one or two degree yeah so it's really pain painful for me for this coldness next please yeah, so these were the things I did during my stay in Japan. I enjoyed the food in Japan, even though uh, most of the time I cook by myself to save some money. But like the ramen, the sushi, the vegetable and fruits are so tasty and different from Malaysia. Even the Japanese curry and Malaysian curry are so different. The experience I gained during my sightseeing ride made me to think about both countries, such as the culture, the lifestyle, etc. The contrast really makes me think a lot. Next, please. So, for examples, this is the Tokyo Station, uh, the heart of the capital. I always compare Tokyo Station with our Kuala Lumpur train station as both exhibit historical values and they are transport hub. Um, Tokyo Station right, is literally can bring you to anywhere of the Japan because it connects the country by trains and Shinkansen. It also has a, it's also an integrated bus station like the TBS in Malaysia. So I took the bus from the University of Tsukuba to the Tokyo Station directly straight in the, you, straight in the university. The concept is like you're taking a bus in the FBM care, will take you to the KL Centre, some, something like that. So in, in contrast, right, the Kuala Lumpur train station is only serves as the platform for the KTMB and mostly replaced by KL Central. And this is due to many reasons. Like uh, we don't have the engineering ability to do that and we don't have uh, such high tra passenger traffic volume compared to the Tokyo station. Next, please. Um, yes, yeah. These are some of the common Japanese cuisine. I think you actually can taste them in Malaysia too. But actually, the prices of the food above are not that high as we think. Like the ramen, right? It's just 20 ringgit, I think. And the sushi was 4 ringgit. I admit that uh, Japan is a high-cost living country. Like my rental fee for a room for about one month is like uh, 900 ringgit. But we still can find some affordable choices and solutions if we did some research. Next, please. So, um, could you see the blue arrow on the road? Actually, it's the line for the cyclists. In Japan, right, uh, cycling is the mainstream of private transport. In the city, there are cycling paths and tracks for the cyclists. In my university, 80% um, of the students are riding bicycles to the campus. And 20% of them right, is like taking the bus or walking to the campus. So during the peak hour, we have a kind of like bicycle jam on the route in the campus because the pet actually it's not a route, it's a pedestrian pathway. So the cyclists need to share the path with the uh, walkers. And one more interesting fact about this ride, and we need to buy insurance for the bicycle. In my case, even a new sh insurance is needed for a secondhand bicycle. So um, in contrast, Malaysian roads are very uh, heavy, vehicle oriented, and not convenient for the people who rode a bicycle. Next, please. So, uh, actually, this is the library of the University of Tsukuba. As you can see, right, there are many uh, bicycles by the students. Compared to our UPM library, it is modern and attractive to the students. They even have a stop bar in it. Like this is the um, feel of the culture shop I met in my campus. The reading culture and is very rooted deeply in the behavior of the Japanese. Like that, from my observation, right? They don't scroll Facebook very often, but they read things like uh, comics, novels. Even in the bookstore in the university, right? They sell comics too. So and they have uh, a small reading corner for every floor of the building so the students can read some books there and relax there. 
Next, please. So after I come back, right, I also have, I also generate some new thoughts after I come back to Malaysia. After coming back from the exchange, I feel more dedicated in doing my own things and become more responsible. And this is due to the fact that because I'm the only one of I'm only one student from UPM to that university, so I have no one to depend on. I need to manage all the difficulties all by myself. Like for example, I learned how to cook by myself, how to buy the plane ticket back to Malaysia, and where to repair my bicycle in Japan, etc. Things like that. Most importantly, I learned that an open mind and heart to other cultures will help us to understand each other's cultures better. I learned different but significant values and thoughts from my foreign friends. Just like one of my Indonesian friends say, he said that he understand the difficulties of a minority as a Muslim in Japan because Japan has very limited masjid and halal food for the Muslim. So this enabled him to understand the difficulties of minority in the Indonesia. I think the same goes to me as well. Next, please. Next, please. Okay, uh, I will choose some of the memorable experience and pick some of the best to present to you. Next, please. Um, the first the first one right was the chambu. Yes, they use the word the Malay word chambu in their own Japanese cultural activities because chambu means mix, right? So this cultural activities is like mixing the foreigners in the University of Tsukuba together, and it is a weekly held cultural event in the university. So every week we will have a uh, introduction of different country from the students from the country. Like for example. The first week is Japan, the second week is uh, Malaysia, the third week is Indonesia, and going on. And I am proud to introduce Malaysia to the Japanese and other foreigners because uh, in the cultural activities, we, we really have many students from every continent, I can say. We have American students, like Brazilian students, Mexican students, European, uh, African, and etc. So it's Actually, it's a very proud moment to take a picture with the Jalo Gamilang in the Japan soil. And secondly, uh, we will hang out together if we have time. We exchange many interesting ideas and thoughts. Since all of us have different background, and um, we listen stories from each other countries as well. Next, please. So, uh, what are the overall thoughts during the throughout the exchange program? Next, please. So, overall, this is an experience once in a lifetime, and um, because once once you step out from the university, you don't have the chance to go to study in overseas and sponsored by the university or the government. So, I managed to grab the chance and go to Japan during my second year and successfully came back before the countries locked down their borders. And as my visa period is up to six months, actually, actually I can choose to come back on um, May or June this year. But I decided to come back earlier for a few reasons. Uh, because uh, the new semester of UPM, I mean this semester, will be start on the February. So I need to come back earlier. And then second, uh, it's due to the Chinese New Year. And thirdly, it's because the COVID-19 pandemic. Because during I come back in January, I started to read some news about the COVID-19. But at that time, it's, I assumed the pandemic was just regional and happened in China only. But uh, apparently, my assumption was wrong. And I, am, I'm, I, I was feeling uh, very lucky to come back because if I come back late at uh, February or March, Maybe I need to come back in Malaysia in, um, in April or May, just like Paris trial. But um, now I think the pandemic in Japan is quite um, a serious situation. 
even the un university they lock down their campus and going the e-learning just like us so the fast passing of my exchange period and the current situation right taught me to appreciate the beauty in my life before they cherish we need to appreciate the things be, uh, before they are gone uh, next slide please in the end uh, i want to say that uh, study abroad changes the way we view the world and it broadens our minds thank you very much and please um, ask me some questions in the chat box thank you okay thank you so much mr ankayong for the insightful presentation uh japanese uh the japanese culture is actually so unique and getting to know more about it from you excited me personally to go to japan and seeing your experience uh going to japan and how it really affected you and and how it really helped you as a person to develop and to to grow and be more responsible and in my opinion i think this is one of the most important thing about being uh, an international student or studying in another country is how this whole experience it change you and improve you and make you see the world and view it in a different way just as you say and i really appreciate how you you managed to overcome the challenges of the language uh, we all know that japan is an english speaking language so uh, you managed to survive for six months and come back so i'm so happy for you and thank you so much for sharing with us those interesting informations Thank you again. Thank you. So now, um, just a uh, gentle reminder for all those who joined us now, if you have any question, please write it down in the chat box. We will have a time for question at the end of the session. But now let's move from Japan to France across the continent. Yes, with our next speaker, uh, Ms. Uh, Amira Afrina. She will share with us her experience being a student for 12 months almost like it's a year actually in France. So Ms. Amira Fina, the mic is yours. Uh, please um, um, unmute your voice, yeah. Thank you. Hi, hello everyone. Um, my name is Amira Fina Mithyazman. I did my exchange program for a year in University de La Rochelle in France. Um, wait, how do I share? Uh, can can share the PowerPoint? Is everything okay, Ms. Amira? Uh, the PowerPoint. Just share screen. Okay, yeah. Okay. Can you see? Um, just a minute. It's uploading. Okay. Can everyone see the PowerPoint? Yes, it's okay. All right. So, um, yeah, I did my exchange program in University of the La Rochelle in France. It's a uh, five hours drive from Paris, uh, and it's located in southwest of France. Um, it's it's very unfamiliar with people, but yeah, it's if you know Bordeaux, it's somewhere nearby. Okay, so my initial thought before I went to France was I was scared. Uh, because I was going to go to France alone and um, there are people who told me are you sure you're going to do you want to do this because you're going to waste your one whole year in France and um, you will have to extend another year so that means you you are going to graduate a bit later than everyone else a bit later uh, with a bit later than your course mates so I was, I was uh, doing a lot of thinking because the thought of having to graduate late than my friends are quite, you know, like quite uh, saddening a bit because uh, it was because they're going to graduate first than me. And then the thought of having to settle down alone in France is already um, terrifying because I went there alone. Um, uh, I went there alone without 
without any friends from UPM. And I don't actually, before I went there, I don't, I can't actually speak French. I can't, I just learned French theoretically, but I can never speak. So uh, when I arrived in France, uh, when I arrived in France, uh, I arrived quite late and people there seems like they don't even speak English. So at the moment I was, when I arrived, I was like looking for my hotel room, uh, hotel building, but I went to this one person asking for where's this hotel room and they, they said, no, no English. I was like, oh no, what am I supposed to do? And uh, I was, my phone wasn't, my phone wasn't, uh, I didn't put into a roaming, you know, I didn't set it up for the overseas usage. So I was like, I don't have internet. People can speak English and I can only speak uh, basic, basic uh, French. What am I going to do? So I was like, I was like lost a bit and uh, I did find my hotel at the end of the day. So uh, it was, it was, when I arrived, it was very terrifying for me because it was like a mixed feeling. I was happy because I got to see, I, I got to go to France, but at the same time, I was very scared. So, but then uh, I, when I arrived in France, I arrived one, one month earlier than the class supposed to start. So, because I was planning to um, discover France myself and to adapt to the culture uh, before I go to class. So at least when the class started, I wouldn't be as shocked as I, you know, as I am, as I was. So when I arrived one month earlier, I went to France. Uh, I discovered some part of France alone and some of it are with my friends who was in France already. So uh, one of them, they decided to uh, invite me to stay at their place for a month. So I got to visit a lot of places. And interesting thing is that when I was in France, uh, when, when I arrived, I don't have foster fam family. I don't think any UPM students got the chance uh, to have foster family. So I am very fortunate to got to meet like one beautiful old lady, the, the pictures on the right, this one. Uh, they, they, they were asking me what, what I was doing in France and all. And then I told her that I'm going to study. And then she asked me, am I alone? I said, yes. And then she said she decided to foster me for like uh, a week. Yeah, she fostered me like for a week. And she brought me to places to see places uh, in uh, southern part of France. So these are the pictures during a month before I started my classes. So uh, when I arrived uh, in La Rochelle, I have a very I had a very hard time to make friends because um, French people, even if, even before I went to France, they have like I have like one stereotype saying that French people are uh, snobbish and uh, they are they are not easy to approach, which is sometimes could be true. But then um, after after a few months spending my my trip, uh, my spending my days in France. Uh, they are actually. I found out that they are actually uh, very nice and they are actually very friendly. If only if we approach them first, you know. Uh, so these are my friends that I met throughout the year. And uh, people ask me, do I encounter with racism or you know Islamophobia, Islamophobia, some stuff like that. But actually. I don't encounter any of that because, uh, and even my friends are very, uh, very nice. They took care of what I eat, what I drink. Like I'm a Muslim, so I don't drink alcohol or eat um, pork. So they, 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 they would say, they would tell me, uh, okay, this part, uh, okay, this section we have pork, so you cannot eat and stuff. So they are actually, they're taking care of me very well in France. So, so um, I'm going to talk about the classes there in France. It's a bit different than Malaysia. Uh, it's a it's not a bit that it's very different from Malaysia because um, when I first I started to go in the class, 
uh, wait, sorry. When I first started to go in the class, uh, the the lecture it was a mass it was a mass lecture. So the lecturer came in, and I thought he was just to like introduce uh, himself because it was the first day. It was the first day of class, and then we thought he's going to do that. He's going to introduce what he's going to teach and stuff. But eventually, he just started talking nonstop and everyone in the hall was like taking out the papers and pen and write nonstop without the help of, uh, without the helps of um, slides, any, any teaching, um, teaching, you know, uh, teaching alat bantuan mengajar without, uh, without those stuff, without slides and all. So everyone was like writing nonstop. And I was like, I was asking my friend, did the, the class has just started or did the lecturer was explaining and it and then they told me the class has actually long uh like started for in a while i was like i didn't write anything so uh i was like quite shocked because it is very different in malaysia because in my class uh the lecturers uh prepare the slides they explain and stuff but in france it, it doesn't work like that and yeah, uh, that is how the classes in France are. And, um, oh, the students are very, very uh, outspoken. If they don't like what the lecturers do, they just say, unlike in Malaysia, where if we don't understand uh, or if like we don't understand something or we don't like something, we would just like keep quiet. But in France, they will they will like literally have a debate in the middle of the class if they don't agree with something or if they don't understand with something. That is what makes me feel like it is very interesting because I cannot see this in Malaysia. Uh, okay, so you got yeah like that. <laughs> so um, yeah, and but however, the classes in uh, the classes they are quite fun also because. Uh, Sometimes it could be very casual because, uh, for example, during the Halloween, uh, even the professors were wearing um, costumes and the students were also wearing costumes. I don't have pictures of it because uh, I didn't bring my phone that time, so it was a bummer. But then I was just trying to uh, give you a picture where they, they wear costumes and it was, it was very fun. And yeah. This is where it started. It gets depressing at this point. <laughs> uh, during the pandemic, um, wait, okay, so the first country in Europe got affected by the virus was Italy. So, but then France, in France, we were actually, we felt quite safe that time because there weren't any cases. So they, we weren't preparing ourselves and stuff. But then suddenly, the Prime Minister Macron, uh, he decided to make an announcement. So me and my friends, we were watching the announcement and he said, uh, we're going to lock down. And that time, we didn't prepare ourselves. We didn't help, we didn't, we didn't go buy groceries and, you know, stuff. We didn't prepare it. And then the, uh, the next day, our... Our lodging in uh, our university lodging contacted us. Uh, he said, uh, they said, uh, international students have to go back to their country. Um, we were like, uh, we were shocked because how can we go back to the, to our country, to Malaysia? Because that time, I think, uh, the flights, most of the flights has stopped. And uh, I, I don't think there's a lot of flight, I, uh, but if there, if there were a flight, the tickets were going to be very expensive. And other than that, we cannot go back to Malaysia because um, there were no public transport. Like, from La Rochelle going to Paris, because the flight were only from Paris. So from La Rochelle to Paris, there, were, there weren't any public transport. So they, there, was, they, there was no... Sorry, there, there was not any um, trains, any flights, any taxis going to Paris. So we, we said, how can we go back? We don't have any choice to stay here. 
And then uh, the student, the International Student Council decided to have a talk with the director, I think. And they let us stay in, in our lodging. But, uh, and it's actually quite worrying to stay in the university lodging was because everything is shared. We share everything, the toilets, the public spaces, the TV rooms, um, the study room, we share, we share the spaces, the common spaces. So it, it was quite worrying to stay, to share during the pandemic, to share things with other people, you know? So uh, it, was, um, it was very, that time we were, my, me and my friends, um, this, the pandemic happened on the second semester, so my other UPM friends were already in France. So we were, we were quite shocked, quite sad, because they decided to just let us go back home. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, during the situation in France, during the pandemic, uh, it was very scary, because I would say, I would say Malaysia is very strict. You know, none of us can go out in Malaysia, right? During the during the MCO, but in France, we apparently we have an attest attestation. Uh, we have an attestation where we can still go out for jogging, for groceries, but we can only go out within an hour, within one hour. So. Uh, People, 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 there, there's a lot of people still outside. Uh, there are people who jog, who, who don't follow the social distancing. Even when the clubs, the bars are closed, they still have a, a, a mini party with them themselves. It was, it was very scary to know because, you, you know, there's virus out there going around and you guys are, uh, and people there are still having fun. And yeah, uh, so so, but then the um, the people there uh, they don't follow the SOPs. They don't do social. They don't practice social distancing. And um, yeah, that's all it. <laughs> and uh, oh yeah, there's there was this one day I remember. One day, uh, the cases was very high. The cases were like 30,000 cases per day, which is crazy. 30,000 cases, not within a week, but a day. So I was, at that time, I was very scared. I wanted to go back. I really wanted to go back because I am worried. But then uh, I was, I did like some thinking also. If I go back, I, I bring the chances, I bring... I have the chances to get affected by the virus during the in in plane during the uh, what we call it during the uh, stop during the stop going back to Malaysia. I I am exposed to the virus, so I think that I me and my friends we decided we just stay in France um, until it's like a bit toned down. So yeah. And during the lockdown, we didn't do anything much. We, we just, we had our online classes. Uh, we had our exams. We had, uh, we do our grocery shopping. And it was so hard to do the grocery shopping because we are Malaysian. We like to eat rice. And everywhere we go, there's no rice. There's no pasta. And it was so hard. <laughs> it was so hard to even get like one pack of rice. And yeah, and uh, it was my experience during the pandemic was quite saddening um, because I got to know my sorry I got to know my parents and my sister in Malaysia got affected by the virus and I was doing my exams and I got a call from my sister uh, saying my mom going to put sorry my mom going to put down to sleep. Uh, and don't know when, and don't know when she will be able to wake up. So it was quite sad for me to know I am far from my family. I couldn't be there with my family. And there's like there's like my dad, my mom, and my sister who got affected, and it was very sad. But it was uh, luckily I get through it uh, with my friends. So yeah, moving on. 
uh, during the pandemic, the process going back home to Malaysia was very, it was a hustle. Uh, it was a hustle because we planned with Kwan uh, Fairuz uh, uh, and Kwan uh, Miss Nadia how 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 are we able to going back to Malaysia? How can we go back to Malaysia? Because we don't have any options. We don't have any trains. We don't have anything to go to Paris to take the flights. And the flight I remember on April was almost like eight thousand, nine thousand ringgit, ringgit. So it was very expensive. So uh, we were discussing about this for a long time to know when uh, to know when uh, when's the date that we can come back home. So after after discussing, um, Macron decided Macron, Macron decided to um, how to make the public transport available again, but it was it wasn't like a lot of public transport. But I think like there's only one train per day going to Paris. So, so luckily, uh, after Macron announced that we we are able to find um uh, uh flight tickets. We 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 are uh sorry we are uh we are able to find uh places to stay in Paris. So yeah, we're back we're back home uh, earlier than we were supposed to. Uh, it was uh, it was also a kind of a hassle a hassle because um, me and my friends we bought uh, we already bought the flight tickets on July yeah on July I think so we had to buy another flight tickets going back home so it's a bummer we were supposed to go back on July but what to do so my thoughts after after going to this mobility program for 12 months I find myself at a better place now I find I find myself um, more independent because I got out from my box from my my comfort zone I would say and I think I have achieved my target my goals which is to be able to speak in French fluently and to have not to like construct the sentences in my head first and then talk. Now, what I did to speak in French is I just speak, you know, I don't have to think, I don't have to construct the sentences. And I think I have achieved my goals and I am very proud of that. And these are some of the pictures. So my most memorable experience during semester exchange during my semester exchange is traveling around Europe and meet new people along the way. So uh, during last spring, uh, we, me and my friends, my friends that I met in, uh, in France, we traveled uh, to Spain, uh, to Barcelona, Madrid, uh, Portugal. So that was like, my best experience because if I didn't go there, I wouldn't be able to travel to a lot of places in Europe. So yeah, these are my pictures in France uh, in traveling while traveling. And the most exciting part of traveling is you got to meet other people. You got to see other people, other cultures. Um, and uh, I sometimes I travel alone and sometimes I travel with my friends. So. I often use couch, <clears throat> couch surfing to connect with other people from other countries. Uh, so I got to meet people like this, this, this gentleman here, the the middle bottom one. Uh, he taught me how to make pasta, pasta, how to make pasta from scratch. It was so interesting because in Malaysia I wouldn't be doing pasta. I would just bought, I would just buy pasta from shops, but he taught me and then this this um this pictures at the bottom is the the family that foster me the lady that foster me we went we went um to see places with her friends so yeah these are the people that i met along journey along the journey and yeah my overall thoughts on the semester exchange 
I think this is the best thing, one of the best things that has happened to me. Uh, and um, uh, I got, I managed to, I managed, now I managed to speak the language that I learned. Uh, I managed to get out from my comfort zone. Uh, I managed to know myself better. Especially during traveling alone, I managed to know myself better, know my capability of doing things. So, um, will I recommend to other to other French to other UPM students? Yes, I would. I really recommend recommend it to you to do it. So, uh, that's all it. I think. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Amira. Your experience is so, so amazing. And I'm sure that everyone agrees that you're so brave to be there during that time. I'm so happy for you first to come back to Malaysia safely and to achieve your goal. And I hope your family is doing well now. So you've mentioned a lot. Your experience is just like, I'm trying to observe and adjust a lot of the information that you gave us, how you survived the, your first day. And so happy that you find the hotel at the end of the day. <laughs> and how you managed to speak the language that you were learning and traveling around Europe, meeting new people, challenging with mental, uh, with like mental challenges, being there alone, your family coming back to Malaysia. I'm sure our audience have a lot of question for you so be prepared <laughs> thank you so much again for sharing your experience with us and now let's go back from france to japan again but this time let's spice thing up a little bit and let's talk post grad let's go to a higher level and more challenging um let me say academically uh, with our next speaker miss pavitra uh, who did her um uh, who did exchange in japan for two weeks um sorry i will just remind you again for those who joined us if you have any question please type it in the uh, chat box in the zoom panel uh, so later we're gonna have a question a time for question to ask our speakers and now without further ado i've been rambling a lot let's Welcome the final speaker, Ms. Bavitra. The mic is yours. Can you please unmute your voice, Ms. Bavitra? Okay. Hello. Hello. So, shall we start now? <laughs> Okay, should I uh, share the screen here? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone. Hope you all doing good. Uh, my name is Pavitra Parmalingam, and I would like to share my experience of my time at Japan during the global crisis. Uh, first of all, I want I, I would like to thank Iputra for taking initiative to organize this webinar, and also giving me the chance to be the panelist today. Here yeah, uh, some little introduction about myself. As you all know, uh, my name is Pavitra Parmalinga of Biotechnology and Biomolecular Sciences. I'm from Faculty of Biotechnology and Biomolecular Sciences. I am a postgrad master student majoring in plant molecular pathology and I'm currently in my first year, second semester. Okay, I did semester exchange at Kyushu Institute of Technology, also known as QTech Izuka Campus at Fukuoka, Japan. QTech has three campuses, and the campus I went is at Izuka rural area. Uh, they are actually specialized in biology and computer sciences. And it is a very beautiful campus to be around, also very convenient as well, because it is just a stone throw distance. 
grocery shops and etc they even provided me with a cycle for me to move around and i will go around the village just nearby i as gs utm they came up by a poster saying that there will be a financial aid for those who wish to do their research at overseas i think any of you interested you can try that so yeah why waste the chance right and my supervisor associate professor dr nur baiti saidi also encouraged me to most to attend this at the same time she contacted the person in charge at the qtech and got me the offer as soon and my initial thought before the semester exchange program of, co of course i was very excited because i got accepted by the qtech management around last year november and this is my very first experience to study abroad even though it's just for smaller period of time so uh, i plan to leave japan on 4th of february this year uh, just after 3 months after the covid-19 newly emerged or just started and japan was around the top space with more infection that time because japan is new to china <laughs> I started to have this uh, mixed feelings whether I should go or not but uh, there was no any emergency declaration by both the countries and also WHO yet and the world was still new to the pandemic so I kind of overlooked the situation and went there anywhere but I bear in mind that all the precaution I should take if the situation got worse during the semester exchange program of course it's a new when it was a solo trip as well once i reached the pandemic then uh, our people in malaysia i was adapting to the winter culture and ways to communicate and the communication was very hard for me because everything is written and speak or spoken in uh, japanese so i have to use google translator most of the time and as well my interim supervisor professor dr kausuke hanada and my fellow lab mates was there for me all the time no matter what i was very amazed with their way of conducting research at their labs and also the labs are very well occupied and i learned many skills throughout my journey and the sad thing is i could not go many places a lot due to the crisis and the cases were still alarming and rising that time but i felt lucky as i managed to go there before the situation got worse if not i just stayed in malaysia that time and after the semester exchange of course it was a good uh, memory or journey to cherish forever but i wish to be there till the end since i had to come back malaysia to than my initial departure due to this covid-19 and i'm looking forward to go there again maybe any time soon or some other days here i would like to share a uh, few of my happy or pleasant experience before i move to the next first i witnessed snow for the very first time in my life uh, somehow it was on my birthday it's such a double celebration for me that was the only day to be snowing at fukuoka at the entire winter period so how uh, privileged or fortunate i am so you can see them in this short video it's a boomerang and plus the droplets of snow from my faculty and next is visit to imen ito house and fukuoka tower with my fellow lab mates then even hit the house in the old mining house situated in izuka and fukuoka tower is the significant or signature tower placed in fukuoka prefecture next is welcome and hanami party by my lab mates hanami party for the newcomers and this party normally will be organized uh nearing to the spring season 
Next is farewell party and day out with Malaysian students at Dazaibu Shrine. Those are, uh, those are Malaysian undergrad students under JPA and Mara scholarship at QTEC. They too helped me a lot during my stay there, especially as my translators, because wherever we go, they become my translators to change the Japanese language in BM or either BI. And next is Sakura or Cherry Blossom. Uh, trust me, it was very beautiful and I am fortunate, but they only lasted for two weeks before they vanished away. So this is how it looks. Next, let's move to the tragic experience I faced. As I mentioned before, I came back three three weeks earlier than I planned due to this COVID-19 and also my flight got cancelled because militia was under movement control order or MCO since there was tremendous increase in COVID-19 cases worldwide. So that time militia was also in critical stage and we were so clueless and I have to find alternative way together with other UPM mates at Wakamasu campus to book our Japan Airlines immediately. Since uh, IG, uh, just SGS and Iputra was urgent as soon as possible before we get stranded there. So this picture was taken during our departure at Narita Airport, Tokyo. The flight was fully occupied with Malaysian students like us and also JPA and Mara scholars. Furthermore, I have to leave and stop my project or experiment at QTech halfway because of this issue. Luckily, my SV and my lab mates offered their help to generate my transgenic plants there. So they are very kind hearted and understand my desperate situation that time. Once we safely landed at Malaysia on 10th of April and also Japan was newly uh, opened their what, lockdown that time and we immediately brought to registration for medical screening by NATMA. Then they were given a small briefing regarding our quarantine procedures and etc. They fully disinfected us and our staff before we got into the bus. And we were escorted by the police toward our way to the hotel as shown in this video. <laughs> like a boss. Next, our quarantine days at Hotel Royal Kuala Lumpur, which is for 14 days with 260 guests from our flight Japan and also from other flights from Egypt, and which is fully sponsored by the Malaysian government, which is they allocated 150 ringgit for per person per day with luxury room, three meals per day and unlimited snacks and drinks. But we never allowed to meet, talk or see anyone outside the hotel due to this SOP and also strict rules. And I would like to thank the Malaysian government for taking such initiative and will provide us with a good stay for the two weeks. Four tests were taken for twice in a which uh, uh, you have to follow the social distancing and positive uh, for COVID-19 that time. We allowed to go back home after our second swap. And this was a token of appreciation from my side. Service was very good and heartwarming. I am forever gratitude to them. They played the major role to bring the situation under control. Thank you, Frontliners. And my overall thought is like, um, yes, uh, it's very good different experience indeed in my life. I guess it Studies. Even though there was a little drawback or setback and struggle, I always paid a bit for myself. And that's all for me today. And thank you again for the opportunity. I hope in future days many students will join the Outborn 
program organized by UPM and I Putra. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Uh, Pavitra, for sharing your experience with us. And so happy for you that you came and arrived to Malaysia safely. Uh, your experience is so interesting because you went during the pandemic and you came back halfway already through the pandemic. So uh, I'm sure that I'm seeing a lot of questions and people are quite curious about our speaker uh, speakers' experiences. So lucky for you, now we'll begin the Q&A session. And so please, just a gentle reminder, if you have any question, type it down in the chat box or you can unmute and ask our um, our speakers directly. But before we start getting uh, questions from the audience, we have some questions to pose to our speakers. So I would like uh, all of our speakers for today to unmute their uh, voice so they can respond to us. Okay, thank you so much. So uh, my first question is uh, directed to Mr. Uh, Anka Young for uh, he had you has mentioned you have mentioned um, that going to Japan was uh, quite a different experience for you, a culture shock, you developed, you grow, and you start viewing the world from a different view, right? So I would like you to tell us about, uh, more about this uh, point and how this experience changed you personally, like as a person, beside the academic achievement that you have had there. Um, okay, so um, another experience, right, that changed me personally is, uh, if, in my own observation, Japanese when they're doing things right, they are like following some hidden common rules we don't know. Like they have the, how to say, they always can cooperate with each other. Yes, they have conflicts, but uh, their conflicts, right? They are not like the kind of like, just figure out a mention is like debate. They will, how to say, they will settle, settle it in a very uh, um, polite and civilized way. And then um, they're very, how to, uh, how to say, they're very uh, keep track on the time. Like, um, it, because I always go to Tokyo, and then they, the, the time schedule of the train, I will stick to the schedule. I watch my clock and compare to the, the arrival of the train, yes, it's on the time. So uh, these are the good traditions or habits from the Japanese I learned from. And then from the other country students, like uh, Indonesia and Brunei, I know that there are many, um, how to say, like for example, the Muslims, um, the, the Muslim friends I met in Japan from Indonesia are very different from the one I met in Malaysia. Like for the same thing, they can have a totally different uh, perspective towards the same thing. So it's kind of like, hmm, uh, like, uh, not luckily, um, it's, quite amazing for me, even though um, we are Muslim countries like Brunei and Indonesia, but they view things differently. Like at that time, one of the hot topics in Malaysia is about the application of the Jawi fonts in Malaysia. So I discussed this with my Brunei and Indonesia friends, and they give me very different perspective. Like uh, my Brunei friend says, it's, it's common to use the Jawi fonts in Brunei, and for my Indonesian friend, he said that it's only in some parts of the Indonesia, but not in the whole nation. So as a Malaysian, as a Chinese, I feel a wow and I'm, I'm new to this topic. So yeah, it's many experience I can learn from. Thank you. Thank you so much for answering the question. And uh, now my second question is directed to Ms. Amira Afrina. Uh, your experience is quite unique and inspiring, actually, and you're such a brave person to be there encountering all what you've, you have encountered. But uh, I like the point that you mentioned about reaching out to people and making friends. You managed to make a lot of friends, like the pictures you actually with every, with the different people in different pictures, like you met a lot of people. So uh, how did you do that? Because I know this is a problem that faces a lot of people when you go to new places. Me personally, when I came to Malaysia, I was like, well, it's going to be quite challenging to make friends, to talk to people. You need to be brave, and obviously you are, to approach people and initiate the conversation. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh I was actually having the same thought as you. When I arrived, I was like, I don't know how to make friends. Oh. But then actually, eventually I need to make friends, you know? And I make friends with a lot of locals because 
my goals going there was one i need to speak french so i need to make friends with the locals so um what i did was i was the one who approached uh approach this one friend uh she's french uh, a uh, a woman and then um that time was during uh our welcoming party for from my faculty and the welcoming party in france are very different they have they have drinks uh you know not the drinks like orange drinks but they have boost so uh that kind of uh, the parties was um very fun because you got to meet a lot of people and some of them are already uh, drunk and when they are drunk they are very very friendly <laughs> so i took the op opportunity to be friends with them during that time because uh yeah because i met this one girl and then she led me to other other people and then um besides that uh how i make friends was uh was you just uh if you see people who uh who sits alone you just sit with them and start talking with them that's the way how i approach them and if they feel comfortable with me they will go along with it and yeah thank you so much for answering the question uh, i have a quite similar experience beside the drunk part just that you approach people and you talk to them when they're like alone and <laughs> alone or even with a group of people you always have to be the one who go there and say hi um fatima for example an international student and yeah officially people will like you will make a lot of friends now my third question is directed to miss pavitra since you went during the pandemic and you came back halfway through the pandemic so we experienced the overall experience going through the pandemic in japan and also in malaysia i would like to know what are the challenges that you faced as a mobility student during this pandemic and how did it affect your overall uh, overall experience yes uh, it was quite challenging because it is pandemic <laughs> and japan was <laughs> because the cases are still rising in japan that time and qtag was uh, announced lockdown the day before i arrived in malaysia so i feel quite lucky in that case because initially i wanted to extend my stay there because i want to finish my experiment too i cannot leave my experiment halfway and come back here so i already in the midst of process to to apply the extension visa and stuff and then came the story where the japan cases are still rising where uh fukuoka started to get more infections that time so i have no choice i have to withdraw all my applications and come back plus the worst part is um i have to withdraw my experiment also like it's like a big withdraw for me because most of the results are just went like that where i have to start back from beginning after i come back malaysia but then since after even i come back malaysia upm wise also under lockdown <laughs> and after 3 months i'm now only i'm starting back all my works that is the um, what to say cons of doing research i think and that was the biggest challenge la um for i think malaysia's uh, all everyone is very privileged uh, make the or make the situations under control by this time i think in japan now the cases are still rising and more and more and even if i stayed there i think it would be very hard for me and i would have stayed there forever that's all <laughs> um good luck in your um your master work or your lab work uh, hopefully you can finish on time uh, so my last question is directed to all of our speakers for today uh, i know that a lot of students uh, in upm want to study abroad they want to experience being mobility student but they're quite afraid they hesitate going uh, out of their comfort zones um, of course we all heard for your challenges language pandemic uh, culture whatever you have a lot of things that you need to face so is there any advice uh, that you would like to give to the students? and are thinking about studying abroad yet they're still hesitating doing it i think so we start with uh, we start yeah with mr ankayan okay uh, first of all uh, don't be afraid to be uh, studying abroad because i survey quite a few number of my friends 
I say, uh, why don't you go to overseas to study? Because it's, it's sponsored by the university. It's kind of a great experience. And they say, I'm afraid of foreign culture. I'm afraid of, I'm, I'm able to speak in the local languages. Uh, so in my opinion, right, we, we do, actually we don't need to be afraid of um, encounter such challenges when we've been to study abroad. Everything will be fine when we, when we go, go there. Like just like VR cases, right? Yeah, you see, we can encounter the things naturally. So don't afraid and step up from the comfort zone. Thank okay, you. thank you so much. Can we hear from um, Ms. Bavitra? Uh, yes, as I, Mr. Eng Kak Yang told, please don't hesitate because don't miss any chance like this because you won't get, you won't know you will get this kind of chance in your life after this or not. Uh, be prepared mentally and physically for the unexpected things like this pandemic because by the time I go, I didn't know that there will be a lockdown in our country and also there. But that time, we are, everyone are managed to overcome this because we have this courage and strength within us. So I'm very sure all the students are, will also have the same strength and courage within you. And please make, make use of all the opportunities you're getting in their life. Um, that's all from me. Thank you so much. And yeah. lastly, can we hear from Ms. Amira? Uh, my advice is to just go for it. <laughs> uh, I've been feeling scared. Uh, it's normal because you need to get used to it. Uh, but just go for it. Follow your guts and uh, always think of like what's the pros and cons of doing it. But uh, even if there's a lot of cons, you never if you never try, you never know. So just go for it. That's all. Thank you so much. And I think now we can take some questions from our audience. So the first question is to Mr. Anka Young. Uh, the question is, did you go through any language courses before going to Japan? Um, yes. Actually, I self-learned the language like one month, not one month, one year before I entered the university because um, study abroad is one of my targets during my university life. But um, I just learned some basic Japanese words to, uh, for a minimum understanding so that at least I can read some signboards or understand some things from the locals. If, if I go too deep, I, I can't manage to do that. Uh, and I don't take any language course during my stay in Japan because if I take uh, the language course, I will need to come back at um, February or March. So I abandon the course and take the time to go to sightseeing and doing other things. Thank you. Thank you so much for answering the question. So the second question is to uh, Ms. Amira. Uh, the question is, what are the initiatives that from the government, from the French government to handle the pandemic during the first stage? And also, what are the most culture shock things you've encountered in France? Okay, um, the first question. During the pandemic, like I said before, the what the government did was um, they closed all of the bars, the clubs, the cinemas, cafes, everything they closed. And um, except for the groceries and clinics. And uh, yeah, we need to have a certificate for us to go out. Like we have to type it down, the certificate, and then we have to sign it. And we have to write what's the purpose of us going out. And there's there's five choices, but the one that I remember was um, a recreational reason purposes like jogging, taking a uh, fresh air, and uh, the second one is for uh, to take care of some other people, like the older people, people who have don't have um, capability of doing something. And the third one was doing groceries. Uh, yeah, as far as I know, yeah, the first one, uh, they closed everything, university and the, with their certificates. That is all that I remember, yeah. And Thank you so much. The, and the next question is to Ms. Bavitra. Uh, so the question is asking, uh, from which airport did you leave or travel? And also, is there any strict policy about the uh, movement, the movement in Japan during the pandemic? Um, 
our flight was for actually we always stay at the airport for one day our flight from fukuoka on 9th of april but there was no any restriction that time because the day after we reach here only japan was declared uh, emergency state there so it was quite normal that time still we have to follow all the sops there they will check our temperatures and stuff and we stayed overnight at narita airport because our our way our flight way to kuala lumpur is on next day so it was quite hard because there was no bed to sleep and we just literally sit on the bench and spend our time and waited for our time to be there <laughs> yes and we safely reached uh, malaysia after 7 hours of flight next day thank yes. you so much for answering the question it seems like we've answered all the questions for now so um uh, it seems also that we have reached to the end of this session so thank you again to all the speakers for participating in our session and thank you for all the participants for joining us uh, don't forget to follow iputra's i in instagram account and other social media account where they post about all the mobility programs and scholarships and opportunities open for all upm students maybe who knows next time we have you as um, our guest in one of our sessions right and as you've heard from our speakers it's an interesting experience and me personally i can tell you that it's one of the most amazing things that can happen to you as a student is to study abroad so then hesitate to check uh i put us uh, social uh, social media accounts and if you have any question you can also post there and ask thank you so much for joining us and hope to see you again in future future sessions thank you